the 95-5 code for activating the Law of Attraction by Richard Dotz. Table of Contents Chapter 1 – A More Effective Definition of Manifestations Chapter 2 – Working with Manifestation Stock Points Chapter 3 – Seeing Through the Eyes of the Universe Chapter 4 – How I Discovered the 95-5 Code Chapter 5 – Understanding the 5 in the 95-5 code. Chapter 6, How I Spend My Sacred Manifestation Time. Chapter 7, Living the 95 in the 95-5 code. Chapter 8, Living the Immersion Technique. Chapter 9, The Universe Holds Your Intentions in Escrow. Chapter 10, Living the Way of the Great Master. Chapter 1, A More Effective Definition of Manifestations Most books on manifestation and reality creation emphasize outer directed actions and steps to ask for what you want. If only you'll do these steps in the right order as described. Then you'll get this. Indeed, a quick browsing of titles on any bookstore shelf, or online catalog, will show you that there is no shortage of books wanting to show you physical methods that claim to materialize your desires and attract greater good into your life. All is well and good, but all this brings about several unanswered questions, what do we do during the rest of our time when we are not using these techniques? Are we supposed to use these manifestation techniques and state our intentions, desires over and over again? Or are we supposed to do them just once, as is often suggested? What do we do with the 95%, or possibly more, of our time when we are not actively stating our desires, visualizing, writing affirmations, meditating, praying, or engaged in some esoteric technique? What do we do during the times in between? It turns out that the answer to this question holds the keys to successful and effective manifestations. In fact, it makes all of the difference, and is responsible for most of your day-to-day -day results. Even I am surprised, looking back, that I did not realize this profound truth earlier. Because I too, like many others have also fallen into the trap of focusing on outer directed rituals that one can take to manifest our desires. What I realize today after more than a decade of doing this work is that all the active manifestation techniques we practice constitute only a very small portion of our waking hours. I calculated that even if we meditated or engaged in active visualization three times a day for 15 minutes each time. It still only works out to be a measly 3% of our day. 3%. And most people I know don't even actively state their intentions or visualize for that long every single day. Is it any wonder that these manifestation techniques often do not produce desired results for most people? It is not because these techniques do not work but because their effects are being overridden by what most of us do during the remaining portion of our time. And so this is the premise of the book you're holding in your hands right now. Using a concept which I call the 95-5-955 code, I explain and address the fundamental question of what you should do during the intervening periods. The time in between that can make all the difference. Perhaps it is apartment to start off here with an explanation of what manifestation really means. Over the years, I have heard various definitions and explanations of manifestation, ranging from the practical to downright esoteric. None of these definitions have really stuck with me, because to me, manifestation is such a central concept that is intertwined with the core of our being. It is indefinable. It is literally who we are. As creative beings, we cannot be separate from the concept of manifestation, and of bringing things into being. Therefore, 
understand that you don't even have to know what manifestation means or is in order to tap into these powerful universal laws. I define manifestation, in its simplest form, as bringing something which you want into physical form, from its non-physical form. At its most fundamental level, manifestations are about bringing what you want into form, by deliberately aligning yourself with the feelings, thoughts and emotions that match what you physically want. You'll find that this definition is in line with what a lot of spiritual teachers teach, which is that in order to create something in your life, you first have to become the thing. You have to resonate with it, and be one with it. You must think thoughts and feelings that are in line with the desired outcome that you want. That is the essence of manifestation. I would also like to add that the manifestations we are talking about here are deliberate manifestations. In other words, we are concerned with the usage and application of these universal laws to bring about desired conditions into our lives. We are not interested in unconscious manifestations or unconscious creations, which may sometimes bring us our deepest fears instead of our deepest desires. Therefore, much of effective manifestations comes from applying these universal principles in the right way, such that we bring about our greatest good into our lives. Instead of having to spend time undoing our unwanted manifestations, you'll be surprised at how effective some individuals are as manifestors, except that they are constantly bringing in unwanted stuff into their lives. They then have to use lots of mental and physical energy to correct these physical conditions after they have manifested. This leads to a lot of unnecessary time and energy spent, not to mention heartache and disappointments. The new year is just round the corner as I write these words. And as we enter a whole new season I am inspired to share a new understanding of manifestations with everyone. This understanding is closer to our hearts, and I feel it is also more relevant and easily applicable than previous definitions. It is this, effective manifestations are about getting past blind spots in our own thinking. How incredibly simple and apartment! The first time this definition came to me as I was going about my day. I was amazed by the simplicity and truth of what the universe had just presented me with, effective manifestations in our lives are nothing more than getting past blind spots in our own thinking. I was then inspired to think back to several episodes in my life. And I realized that it was exactly what happened in each of those episodes that led to successful manifestations. Each time I asked for something, I often did not believe it could come to me. Or I would be worried over when and how my desires would be fulfilled. All of this erroneous thinking went on for the longest time. I did not realize it back then. But I realized today with profound clarity that they were simply blind spots in my OWN thinking. Not blind spots in anyone else's thinking. Because no one was withholding my good from me. Not blind spots in the universe's perception. Because the universal always has a complete, whole, and perfect picture of our good in full view. But simply blind spots in my own thinking. I had not allowed myself to think that it was possible to have what I asked for. For example, when I asked for a luxury car, I did not think it was possible because I used a lack of money as an excuse, or the excuse that the bank would not grant me a loan. That was nothing more than a blind spot in my own thinking. Similarly, with many other desires in my life. I was constantly worried over whether they would be delivered. My blind spot in my own thinking had prevented me from trusting and having faith in the universe, that what I wanted would be delivered in the most perfect way possible. In its most perfect time. Today, as I write these words, I realize that manifestations are simple. There is nothing mysterious or magical about them. Everything has been laid out in plain sight all along, 
expounded by ancient and modern spiritual masters using different words over the ages. These spiritual masters have been trying to drive home these spiritual truths time and time again, through the use of parables, shock techniques, humor, jargon, scientific explanations. You name it, they have used it. Almost every single technique has been applied with the sole purpose of helping us get past blind spots in our own thinking. Once you are able to get past those blind spots in your thinking, no matter what methods you use, the manifestations will appear almost instantaneously that you'll be surprised by the speed and precision of it all. For many years I wanted a luxury car. I asked and asked for the longest time, five years in fact, and it did not come to me. Everything stayed the same externally on the outside. I was doing all the outer directed rituals I could possibly be engaged in, from meditations to very vivid visualizations complete with emotions, sounds, mantras and imagined actions. I was visualizing and doing everything as taught. Yet I did not understand that my actions, no matter how frequently or fervently I engaged in them, constituted only a very small portion of my waking hours. Even in those days when I was intensely focused on my desires, I estimate that I spent no more than 5% of my waking hours intently focused on my desires. It is rather difficult in this modern day and age to be thinking about our desires all the time and to engage in outer directed actions to attract them all the time, as we have day jobs and other responsibilities to attend to. And no, thinking about them all the time and spending all our time visualizing is not the answer either, as I'll explain in the later part of this book. Despite the fact that I was spending lots of energy, emotions visualizing and thinking about what I wanted, I still had not allowed myself to get past the blind spots in my own thinking. I did not manage to think past those blind spots. Two of which I still remember quite clearly now, first, I did not think I could have enough money to afford the car. I did not think I could afford it, and second, I did not think I deserved to drive such a nice car. How I came to believe in those unresourceful beliefs is not the issue here, because that is not the key to effective manifestations. What is key to any manifestation is how we think past, or around those blind spots. The moment we successfully do so, the manifestations will happen very fast. This means to say that the moment I could allow myself to think in a way that I could afford the car, or that I deserved to own that car, then physical reality had to match up to my new way of thinking almost immediately. That's probably the simplest and the most effective way to explain the entire art of manifestation. Manifestation is nothing more complicated than identifying the roadblocks the blind spots in our own thinking which we have been unable to get past no matter what. And then finding creative ways such that we can now think around these blind spots. In other words, whereas previously I was unable to see a way which I could afford the car financially. The moment I allowed myself to see how I could afford it even though it was only a thought and nothing manifested in reality yet then my physical reality matched up with my new understanding very quickly. The longer I allowed myself to stay stuck with that stuck thinking and roadblock in my mind, the longer I harped on the fact that I cannot afford the car, that was how my reality responded as well. At the end of the day, it is all in our own thinking. It is all in our own inner world and state as I have explained time and time again and there are no exceptions. Get past these roadblocks in your own thinking in whatever creative ways you can. And the outer manifestations will happen really quickly for you. This has been the case for me, time and time again. In the case of manifesting that luxury car, 
I finally got to a place where I allowed myself to think, or see in my mind's eye, even just for a moment. A possibility through which the money could come to me. That was all that was needed. Now notice that this does not have to be the eventual actual way in which the money came to me, neither does it have to be rooted in existing physical reality at that time. All I had to do was to create a possibility inside of myself, an opening in my mind of sorts, that this was somewhat possible. All I did was to create the remote possibility in my own thinking, my own imagination, that allowed me to get rid of the excuses and self-imposed limitations I have previously been using. Once I did that, I was swept along by the physical flow of things and just took one logical step after another, culminating in the final manifestation. That is manifestation explained in the simplest words and terms possible. I now realize today that there is nothing grandiose or earth-shaking about manifestations. You do not have to recite mantras or part seas and move mountains. All it takes for something to manifest is to get past the roadblocks and blind spots of your own thinking on the inside. You do need to move your own inner mountains and part your own inner seas. You do need to create perceptual changes within yourself and allow yourself to get past previously stuck points in your own thinking. We all have these stuck points in the form of negative beliefs or thought patterns. The faster you are able to get past these stuck points and overcome them, the more pleasing your outer reality will be to you. And the faster these manifestations will happen. Until one day, you finally reach a point where you do not have to consciously ask for stuff anymore, and the things you want will still keep happening for you. When you get there in time, it will be done. This is the powerful premise we will be exploring together in this book. Chapter 2 Working with Manifestation Stuck Points The moment you understand that manifestations have absolutely nothing to do with what is happening on the outside, and have everything to do with what happens on the inside, you gain a newfound sense of freedom and profound clarity. Most individuals who are stuck with their manifestations perceive something on the outside as stopping whatever they want from coming to them. They say, I can't have this because I cannot afford it. Their not being able to afford it then becomes an actual manifestation block as to why something cannot happen for them. Ironically, it is also these individuals who ask for things the hardest by using various manifestations techniques and hacks. The mistake they are making is in trying to transcend whatever outer difficulties they perceive through the desperate and repeated fervent use of these techniques. This is not the way in which deliberate manifestations work. Once you are able to understand this key piece of information, you'll gain the much needed clarity in your manifestation process. In my old days, I was trying to make up for all the outer deficiencies I perceived through the repeated usage of these manifestation techniques. I was hoping to manifest in spite of them, while continuing to believe in those limitations. Because I perceived that I could not possibly afford what I was asking for, I could only hope that it would come to me, somewhat miraculously through the use of these manifestation techniques. Hence I was trying to ask for the seeming impossible through the use of all these techniques. And the universe did not seem to respond. Again, is it any wonder that the universe did not respond to my desperate requests at all? Here I was, seeing something as impossible for me through the usual routes. And then desperately putting my desires out there through all these means so they could come in other equally impossible ways. I chuckle a little just thinking about it now and even find it a bit amusing, because I was trapped in the prison of my own thinking without even realizing it. I was setting myself up for repeated failures and disappointments. 
but I also understand that it is certainly no laughing matter if your desires do not come to you even after several of years of asking. I was there once too. With each passing new year, I would say excitedly to myself, perhaps this is the year which things will finally change. Even that was a fallacy in itself, because I was hoping that something external, the passing of a new year, would somehow, and automatically bring about the much needed change within myself. Thus you can see how someone who repeatedly fails to get tangible results through manifestations sets themselves up for more disappointments and limited thinking. Are you trying to manifest something while holding on to all your perceived beliefs on why you cannot have them? If so, that is a major part of the issue that is holding your manifestations up. The universe is always knocking on our door, trying to give us greater good. This is a concept which has been expounded over and over again by classical New Thought authors like the great Florence Scovelshin. I was so taken away by her lucidity in writing that I felt inspired to update her classic book, The Magic Path of Intuition, for the modern reader. One thing that made a strong impression on me from that book, and the reason why I decided to rewrite it back then, was how we were essentially delivering the same message in different ways. Each of us have reached the same place of understanding through different paths, which converged at the end of the day. At the start, the good that the universe delivers to you will not be in terms of outer physical manifestations. They may be something even subtler, and often dismissed or missed by most people. In the beginning, your good will come in the form of subtle shifts in perception. Whereas previously you felt hung up over something, you now feel okay and I'll write about it. That is the first sign, and in fact the surest indicator, that your physical good is on its way. A change in the way you feel inside about things that trip eat you up previously is a surefire indicator that things are happening on the outside. I have a book from spiritual author Richard Bach on my desk. It is titled The Messiah's Handbook, Reminders for the Advanced Soul. Notwithstanding its grandiose title, it is actually a fun answers book. Have you ever visited the bookstore as a child and went to one of those answer books which claimed to be able to answer whatever question you had flipping the book to any page? The Messiah's Handbook goes along the same vein, and it is actually a book from a book. The protagonist in Richard Bach's novel Illusions had a similarly titled book that seemed to give profound answers when flipped to any page, and this book was released following the popularity of that story. Since I am always looking for fun ways to deepen my understanding of universal laws, I purchased this book from a book and started asking it questions. For the longest time, Whatever question I asked always had me flip open to the same page. This frustrated me a little, since I could never understand why I always ended up on that page which had little relevance to the question I was asking. Let me first give you the message from that page, before discussing its significance. This is the page I always flipped to, and it reads, It's a slow process, changing principles and you'll never know that they've changed until something that used to be right just doesn't feel that way anymore. And so that drove me a bit crazy, because what does changing principles have to do with the questions I was asking? I was asking about delays in my manifestation. And then a long time later after I had all these realizations, it finally dawned on me. I was dumbstruck when I realized the significance of that message all along. It was actually relevant. What the message was trying to say, was that I had to get past the stuck points in my own perception, and that I would never know that I have gotten over them until something that used to be right just doesn't feel that way anymore. On another level, it also speaks of our negative tendencies and habits. For example, 
worrying used to feel so natural and right to me in the past, but it does not feel that way for me anymore. Note, before you rush out to get the book in order to ask various questions, know that doing so will be falling into the realm of superstition. There is no one book that can predict the future, simply because the future is malleable and not cast in stone. In other words, you have the power to change any future outcome from your now moment. Most people like to ask questions about the future because we always like a bit more assurance, control over how things will turn out, without realizing that the things and events that are lined up can often be changed. What the book serves as is a possibility playbook for our unconscious. Since the Divine and our Higher Self is always trying to send us messages which we may not easily pick up on, books, techniques like this allow a channel through which such messages can get through to us, by offering a reference point by which we can frame and interpret the messages. In other words, by reading a passage which is open to interpretation, the words set us thinking in a particular direction, eventually leading to a realization. Otherwise, we would not even be thinking in that direction in the first place. And so the answer which I was looking for has always been in plain view all along. The answer which I needed, and which many others struggling with their manifestations need, is a way to deal with these inner stuck points about the various intentions and experiences they are trying to manifest. It is of no use letting all these stuck points remain in our consciousness, while using heaps of manifestation or positive thinking techniques to cover them up on the outside. Doing so would be like piping lots of cream on a spoiled cake. What you need to do is to deal with the cake itself. The cake is the foundation of everything, and makes all the difference in the world. The cream is just the proverbial cherry on top of the cake. Let me explain in greater detail what I mean by manifestation stuck points. There is a subtle difference between manifestation stuck points and limiting beliefs. I will use examples from various scenarios, some of which I have observed in other individuals to illustrate my point, so you'll quickly become aware of how to spot stuck points when they occur. Stuck points are the things that trip up and delay any manifestations. In other words, the longer you allow these stuck points to remain, the longer you are going to be without your manifestations. The first example I'll use is one related to health and well-being. On some mornings, I would wake up with a runny nose, possibly due to some allergic reaction, that went on for almost half a day. My reaction to my runny nose was to pop an anti-allergy tablet, which resolved my allergic symptoms in about half an hour. And so each time I woke up with a runny nose, I would pop a tablet and the symptoms would be gone. One morning, I realized that I had run out of these tablets. And so my nose continued to run throughout the day. Those of you who have been through this experience will know that it can totally spoil your day, especially if you have to keep blowing your nose while doing your other chores. Since I had been an avid student of all these spiritual healing techniques, I decided to try a few of them on my nose. But nothing worked. In this case, the intention I set was to have a clear nose, but no matter what manifestation technique I used, I still continue to feel as bad. Now this is obviously not a book about how to treat medical illnesses or even diagnose any of them. I am merely using this example to illustrate how to treat manifestation stuck points. What do you think was the stuck point here that prevented my manifestation from working? I usually get what I ask for quickly, so it was a surprise to me that this did not work. What's happening here? I did not realize what the manifestation stuck point was until I had this recur a few times over the next few weeks. I still had not found the time to get more anti-allergy tablets from the drugstore, 
but I am glad things turned out the way they did because it taught me an important lesson out of this experience. Once again, I am not asking that you skip medication or use these techniques to diagnose any illness, so please do not attempt to do so. I am merely citing this example to show you that universal principles apply in all circumstances. One morning, it finally dawned on me that my stuck point for this particular manifestation was, I cannot get my nose to stop running without eating the anti-allergy medication. Wow! What a powerful realization it was! And while I had not vocalized or uttered those words before, it was an innate belief which I steadfastly held. In other words, a stuck point is the reason why we cannot have whatever it is that we want. In this case, the stuck point, which is actually stuck energy, was so subtle. I had come to see the anti-allergy pill as the only way in which I could get better and clear up my nose. I am bringing this example up for a few reasons. First to deliberately show you that manifestation stuck points occur in every kind of manifestations, physical and non-physical. In this case, I wasn't asking for a physical object or a particular sum of money. I was instead asking for my nose to be restored to its usual state. Second, it is to illustrate that these universal principles can truly apply under any and all circumstances. Once I identified the stuck point, I set out to see how I could gently overcome it. Although I use the word overcome, what I really mean is how we can think around it. Once you are able to think around, to be not tripped up by a stuck point which previously trip eat you up. The outer manifestations will happen very quickly. So let's take a closer look at what happened to me here. I wanted my nose to be clear. I asked for it to be clear. But I was stuck on my thinking because the only way for my nose to be clear was by using the anti-allergy tablet. Therefore this tripped me up every single time I stated an intention for my nose to be clear. Now here's where it starts to get a little crazy. But it is so fun and it contains the entire key to successful manifestations. The key is this, it does not matter how you get past your manifestation stuck points, as long as you get past them. In other words, it does not matter how you think around them as long as you think around them. You can think around them in some pretty crazy ways. Whatever works, is whatever works for you. I had just read an excellent book by Drive Joe Dispenza, titled You Are the Placebo. In it, Dr. Dispenza cited medical studies in which individuals who had taken a medication for a while could actually synthesize the same chemical compounds in their bodies even after they stopped taking the drug. Reading Joe's book laid the foundation for me and was the first step towards getting past my manifestation stuck point. I then decided to try something fun. Since I always ate my Clarinus tablets and they worked, I figured that my body would know how to synthesize the exact same compounds. What I did was to go into a deep state of relaxation and intend clearing as 500 milligrams to myself, while feeling the feelings of having just ingested the tablet. Within the hour, my runny nose symptoms stopped. The desired outcome had occurred. Once again for the third time, I must remind you that I am not advocating that you stop any medication. All I am doing is sharing with you the lessons contained in this very valuable experience. What I did when I intended and acted as if I consumed the tablet was to get past my own manifestation stuck point that I had to eat the tablet in order to get better. Therefore, the method which I devised to think around that stuck point was to pretend I had eaten the tablet and then rely on the placebo effect to chemically synthesize those compounds in myself. Did I really synthesize those compounds in myself when I intended it? I wouldn't know. But that is not important at all. 
What's important is that I overcame my own stuck point by giving myself an alternative possibility, that it was possible to get the same benefits of the drug without having to ingest the physical tablet. Once you are able to get past any manifestation stuck points on the inside, it is done. Did you see why I am so excited about sharing this technique with you? I think my example above is testament that it works, even in a perceived challenging situation. Manifesting a desired well-being outcome is not like manifesting a physical object, so I deliberately used this example to show you how these principles can apply, even under such circumstances. Understand that my nose cleared up not because I had synthesized those compounds within my body whether it actually did is not important, although Dr. Dispenza would support this view, but because I had allowed myself to get past a major mental hurdle that was standing between myself and my desired outcome. Herein also lies the difference between thinking around a manifestation stuck point, and believing in something. Both are not exactly the same. When you try to believe in something, you are usually doing it in a forceful manner. In the earlier example, believing that my body was really producing the chemical compounds was not the key. I did not have to believe in it. The belief was optional. I did not deliberately and forcefully make myself believe in something that I had a difficult time believing in. All I did, and this is the difference between the two, was to show my mind an alternative possibility to think around a stuck point. It does not matter whether that alternative possibility is true or otherwise. Alright, now let us look at another example that is more similar to a conventional manifestation scenario. I'll use an example about finances, since this is close to our hearts. My friend Mark always had a fixed idea about how much his income would be. Since he traded hours for dollars as a coach, he could never see his income exceed a certain point once he had filled up all his slots with clients. His manifestation stuck point was, my income can never exceed a certain level since I have a limited number of hours each week. Many of these manifestation stock points seem perfectly logical to a person. That is why we continue to be tripped by them on the inside, oftentimes for years on end. Think about my earlier example of how I needed my anti-allergy medications to get better. That was certainly a very logical, scientific thought. Therefore, the reality that followed was that without my medications, my condition would not improve. I am not asking that you stop believing in whatever manifestation stuck points. All you need to do is to allow yourself to conceive of an alternative possibility. Since I had done a fair share of business consulting, I could immediately see Mark's manifestation stuck points. I pointed out to him that if he opened up to the possibility of doing group coaching instead of individual coaching, he could now make more money per hour than before. Mark had not considered this possibility before, and what my words did was to allow him to get past his previous stuck point. Notice that my words were all that was necessary. All we need to do is to plant that seed in our consciousness and our consciousness takes over from there. The moment we get past our previous stuck points, we are immediately elevated to higher levels of understanding and consciousness. That is all that is necessary. Notice that I did not even tell Mark how to get additional coaching clients, or how to pack more clients into one slot. All I told him was he could do it. It was something he could consider. That's all that is needed. The technicalities and the how-tos are not important in the grand scheme of things. Once you see the possibilities, your mind can achieve anything. You are no longer stuck or blocked. Within one month after planting this seed in Mark's consciousness, he went from a four-figure to a five-figure monthly income. What happened? 
he had allowed himself to get past his previous manifestation stuck point. He had spent so much time and energy reinforcing and showing himself why his monthly income was fixed at a particular level in the past. My words showed him that an alternate reality was possible, and that is all that was needed. Are you starting to get excited now too at the possibilities? No matter what manifestations you have been asking for in the past, and no matter how long in coming they have been for you. All that does not matter and never mattered in the first place. Stop trying to find out or directed steps and actions you should take to fulfill your desires. Give up the need to try any out or directed actions, techniques or steps to force your manifestations into being. Instead, start by identifying the inner stuck points that are holding you up on the inside. In my previous two examples, there was only one major stuck point holding up each manifestation. Therefore, when we managed to think around these stuck points, the manifestations came almost instantly. In some other cases, there may be several stuck points holding the manifestation up which you need to identify and work on. In those cases, we would need to work around each stuck point until we are no longer stuck on any of them. Once you have managed to overcome most of the stuck points surrounding an intention, you'll find yourself propelled almost magically in the direction of that desire. But it is not magic, it is law. Chapter 3, Seeing Through the Eyes of the Universe some readers may be amazed by the fact that by making a few simple inner changes, outer reality matches up perfectly and delivers what you want, every single time. But this is really all that is necessary for outer manifestations to take place. Give up the need to engage in more convoluted, forceful or desperate outer directed actions. Give up the need to search and look for more advanced techniques. There is nothing more advanced than the subtle inner work which one can do, and it is always this inner work which is the most advanced, because so few people ever take the time and effort to do them. We are always looking for outer mantras, chants and even magical steps to take that make it seem as if lots of things are happening. When in actual fact, the sole purpose of all those outer directed steps is to convince us that something is happening on the inside. The whole purpose of various outer directed techniques is to help an individual get past his own manifestation stuck points. Once you have successfully worked, thought around your inner manifestation stuck points, it does not mean that your desires will come to you through the manner specified. Let me explain using the previous example. When Mark successfully thought around the manifestation stuck point that his monthly income was fixed at a particular level, his income actually doubled within the short span of a month. But his corresponding increase in income wasn't entirely driven by the fact that he managed to group several coaching students together as suggested by me. That wasn't the full story of how his income actually increased. In fact, once he had successfully moved past the stuck point, he started getting more calls and inquiries about his services seemingly out of the blue. He started booking more coaching clients and people started approaching him. Therefore, getting past one's manifestation stuck points does not entail dictating to the universe a particular course of action to take. When we successfully overcome our manifestation stuck points, we are not dictating that things have to happen in a certain way. We are not trying to send any message to the universe. All we are doing, is to overcome blind spots in our own thinking. Once we are able to overcome these blind spots, we open ourselves to the good that the universe has in store for us. It may be through the means we have imagined, or it may be through even better means. Some of our manifestation stuck points can be very pervasive. One of the biggest ones I've seen is this, 
I don't think it is possible for me to have this thing or outcome. As a result of this pervasive stuck point, we find that some people don't even bother asking for the things they want, because they think they will not get it. Or that it is impossible for them. This happens for everyone, even advanced students of this material. Upon writing the previous chapter, I examined my own life and realized that even I had certain things in life which I accepted, because I thought I wouldn't be able to change them. That is alright as long as you are at peace with these things and conditions in your life. However, don't fall into the trap of thinking that a particular condition is unchangeable and therefore one has to grit his teeth and bear with it. Anytime you are not at peace with something and find it a struggle to bear with anything, your discomfort is an indication that it can be changed. It is providing the impulse, the impetus you need to change it. However, many of us do not even bother asking for an improved situation because we are caught by a big manifestation stuck point, which is that the particular condition cannot possibly be changed. The good news is that once we are able to allow ourselves to think around that stuck point, the outer situation will usually resolve itself very quickly. Sometimes, a mere shift in perception, from moving past the stuck point, will cause a perceived problem to fall apart on its own accord. We may no longer perceive a problem that we perceived in the first place. We have transcended a previous level of understanding. This happens to me all the time. For example, I used to be very hung up when I wrote a nice greeting card to an old friend and did not hear back from them. In fact, I would walk around for days wondering if they received the card, and why is it that they have not replied? The desired outcome that I was asking for was to have my friends reply to my letters and cards, which can't seem to be that difficult in the modern age. When negative feelings started stewing in me, I decided to do something about it. Remember that any type of negative feelings have an effect on your current and future manifestations, since the universe is always picking up on the sum total of your thoughts and feelings. Therefore, even though the negative feelings you feel are not directly related to what you are asking for, Throwing in these negative feelings into the mix upsets your vibrational balance. As I sat down and examined this issue closely, I realized that I had a major manifestation stuck point surrounding this issue. One that was so big and obvious that I did not realize it in the past. The manifestation stuck point was, my efforts are unappreciated because my friend did not reply to me. Once this stuck point was laid out in plain view, it was easy to see why I felt the negative feelings when I did not receive a reply. I felt unappreciated. I felt that my efforts were going to waste. Now please understand that manifestation stuck points are always about us, and nothing about the people that are involved or even named in our stuck points. Therefore, this manifestation stuck point pointed to something inside of myself that needed to be resolved, and nothing about my friends who did not reply to my messages. It is very easy to identify a manifestation stuck point and then cite reasons why these stuck points exist by pointing to the various external parties involved. But doing so would be falling into the very common trap of giving our power to external events and factors. In other words, if I had continued to put the blame on my friends for making me feel those negative feelings, I would not have resolved this stuck point at all. Once the stuck point was identified, I began looking for ways to think around it. Recall it does not matter whether any of the alternative possibilities we come up with are true. What is important is that they allow us to sort out the kinks in our own thinking and feelings. How should one think around the stuck point previously identified? First, I noticed that I equated a non-reply with being unappreciated. 
This strong association made it impossible for me to experience any other reality. Second, I began to ponder alternative realities. Is it possible that non-reply equals appreciation? Definitely. Since there were many times in my life in which I received a greeting card and didn't have the time to reply, I was certainly thankful and grateful to the sender in my heart, but just didn't get round to thanking them in writing or in person. I should have, but I did not, and I still felt thankful and appreciative of their well wishes. Therefore, my stuck point was that I equated non-reply with not being appreciated, when a non-reply can mean so many other things as well. With that, I had created alternative possibilities for myself. I was no longer stuck on that point. I was free. With that one single realization, I was completely free. All the negative feelings dissolved and dissipated. This is a perfect example of perceiving a problem when there is none. There was not even an issue in the first place, but I perceived one due to my own stuck thinking. I conditioned my good feelings on whether my old friends replied to my greetings or otherwise. The moment I got past the manifestation stuck point, it was like a whole new reality. I felt so happy and elated for sending out the card. I felt pure joy in imagining that they received my card and were uplifted by the messages within. I felt pure joy for them and for myself. I was completely free. This has never been about anything or anyone else. But only about myself. The only work to do is always on ourselves. The moment I had this realization. I knew I had cleared another major manifestation block in my life. Sometimes all of our stuck points share a common thread or theme. In this case, the common theme is one of not being appreciated by others. In other words, doing things for others and not being appreciated for them, expecting some kind of thank you or reciprocation. But why should our good feelings be conditional on whether others reciprocate? Why should we bind them with our own expectations of what's appropriate or inappropriate, right or wrong? Let us give up all expectations of how anyone else should behave, and cut off all these bites that we have unconsciously imposed on others. The moment we do that, we are free. I dropped this whole issue from my mind and went about my day. The very next day. I received a phone call out of the blue from a new client wanting to engage my services and book me in advance for the new year. I have no way of confirming it, but I know deeply that it happened as a result of me letting go of yet another self-imposed limitation from my life. When we free ourselves from negative feelings and emotions, especially recurring ones, we return back to that peaceful and pure state that we have always been. There is another ending to this story too. Two days after I successfully dissolved this manifestation stuck point, I did hear back from my old friend. It turned out that he was away and did not receive my card in time. I also know that had I not overcome that manifestation stuck point first, this new reality would not have emerged. Outer reality could only match up when I lived a new level of understanding. I hope I have convinced you about the importance of taking a good look at your manifestation stuck points. Some of them will seem very logical or obvious to you, so much so that we dismiss them at first glance as valid obstacles. They should be, since they have always been there since the beginning. That is why our desired good cannot even come through to us. But these perceived obstacles are often manifestation stuck points that need to be addressed, and we handle them not by making them disappear on the outside, for example, not by taking out our actions to force my friends to reply to me so that I could feel appreciated, but by making them disappear on the inside. Remember, it is always an inside job. Always, 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 when you understand that it all happens on the inside, 
A very empowering and peaceful feeling comes over you. The day I realized that everything happened on the inside, and that outer reality simply mirrored everything I felt or perceived on the inside, a saying I had previously heard many times, I felt totally free. I knew, in that moment, that I could manifest absolutely anything I wanted. And it was an exhilarating feeling. For the first time in my life, I was free from other people's expectations, antics and actions. I knew I could not longer be affected by them if I did not allow myself to. At the same time, I was freeing other people from my expectations. They were free to be whoever they were and I still accepted them wholeheartedly for what they were. When you realize all of these, you are indeed seeing through the eyes of the universe. Chapter 4, How I Discovered the 95-5 Code For the first few years in my manifestation journey, I was extremely focused on various manifestation techniques which I could use to manifest my desires. I read almost every single book out there took every single course out there and had some success with the techniques. But not as much as I liked. In particular, there were a few intentions and desires which continually eluded, and even frustrated, me, as I could never seem to make them work. Despite all of that, I did what most persistent people would. I pressed on, never once stopping to question whether I was moving in the right direction. Somewhere along the way, I realized I had read almost every single book on the subject of manifestation. I had read almost every single take on the topic, and yet things were still not happening. That was when it became a real wake-up call for me. I had two choices, first, I could choose to declare all of these teachings as untrue and turn my back against them. Or second, I could choose to take a good look at what was happening inside myself. I could scrutinize everything I have been doing up till that point. Choosing option 2 would have made for a good story, but the truth is that I chose the first option more than once. Those who have read my other books would know that more than once, I turned my back against these teachings in disappointment and frustration. I had tried so many different techniques out there that I was deluded. But each time I gave up, a calm voice would then told me to go back. It was a nudging feeling, something I recognize today as coming from our higher selves. It was the divine gently guiding me in the right direction. The universe can send us general signals and nudges, but it can never force or compel us to do anything. That's why Abraham Hicks always joke that there is nothing they can do to zap us into action. Or into changing our beliefs. We have to do it ourselves. However, since a part of us is always connected to Source, that larger part of us is always pulling and calling us forth in the direction of our greater good. I know it is that greater part of myself that called me back to these teachings over and over again. Because deep down inside, I recognized those teachings as true even when I was unable to elucidate them as clearly as I do today. So wherever you are on the path right now, rest in the assurance that even if you feel totally lost or clueless, there is still that larger part of you that is gently guiding and nudging you in the right direction. All you have to do is to listen to it that one little bit more. And that's exactly what I did. I listened to my inner self that one little bit more. The final time I came back to these teachings, I sat down and really examined all of it logically. I reasoned that I had done all the outer directed actions a person could humanely take. I also reasoned that I had all the technical knowledge on the subject anyone can possibly have. So what was missing? That was when I finally realized that there have been certain aspects of these teachings that I was neglecting. For one, I could not give up my worrying, a topic which I cover in my other book It Is Done. 
I had convinced myself repeatedly that it was alright to worry, since I was doing all these very positive actions on the outside. In other words, I had totally neglected the 95 and the 95-5 code. I did not pay any attention to what I did during 95% of the time when I wasn't actively doing all these manifestation techniques. It was an eye-opening moment for me, as I realized that even though I was so deeply involved in these various positive techniques, what I did during 95% of my day was still terribly negative and skewed in the other direction. That was when everything started to click for me. I started to examine all my past manifestations and discovered that whenever things happened quickly for me, those were the intentions which I had no manifestation stuck points about. I was clear about them right from the start. Then I looked at the things which were not manifest in my life, and discovered, not surprisingly, that I had all these various stuck points around them. The more manifestation stuck points surrounding an intention, the more challenges I had getting it to manifest. I had hoped to press ahead in spite of these manifestation stuck points, instead of finding clever ways to think around them. That was the crux of the entire issue and the discovery was a real eye-opener for me. It was like a giant weight being lifted off my shoulders. That was when I became aware of what I did during the 95% of my time. In the beginning, I still continued engaging in the various outer manifestation techniques, but the real change came when I began to have conscious awareness over what I did during 95% of the time. It was what made all the difference, and it should, since it represents what we do during most of our waking hours. How you think and feel during the majority of your time makes all the difference in the speed and timing of your manifestations. Whether you are an effective manifester or not boils down to how you manage your inner state during the 95% of the time you are not meditating, praying, affirming. As opposed to the 5% of the time that you are. In fact, the moment I placed my conscious awareness on how I thought and felt during the 95% of my time. The moment I worked to consciously eliminate these manifestation stuck points. Everything happened for me. Long-standing manifestations started coming into my life from all directions, be it in the area of finances, career or relationships. Suddenly, everything worked and clicked. Bear in mind that in the beginning, I was not entirely successful at controlling the way I felt the whole 95% of the time. I was merely shifting my conscious awareness to it. I did not successfully get rid of all of my negative feelings or emotions, but lots of good things still happened for me anyway. This is the way it works in our universe. I am not requesting that you eliminate 100% of your negative thoughts, worries or stuck points from your consciousness right now. That would be doing it the hard way. If you even reduce or think around a single stuck point, that would suffice. Getting rid of that single stuck point will provide the much needed momentum to move you forward. Therefore. Do not ever be concerned that you have too many stuck points to overcome, or that you are constantly thinking negative thoughts all day. Conversely, do not beat yourself up when a negative thought somehow floats through your mind. All I am asking that you do is to reduce the frequency of these negative thoughts, not to eliminate them completely. I've found that even a small reduction in negative thoughts can lead to a huge improvement in outer results. What happened soon after I cleared up what was going on 95% of my time? As mentioned earlier, long-standing manifestations which have been stuck started coming true for me. Even intentions and desires which I set years ago, and had long given up on and forgotten started coming true for me. In the moment they came true, I had a sense of instant recognition and knowing. It was then I realized, oh yes. 
This is what I asked for back then. And it's true now. That feeling is truly incredible. Therefore, I now know today that the universe never forgets any of our intentions and desires unless we choose to change them. Put differently, once we hold an intention, the border part of ourselves continues holding that intention. And there is no need to keep restating our intentions for fear that the universe misses out on it. There is no signal we need to keep broadcasting out there. I rarely talk about the downsides, but I should right now and show you a simple workaround. In fact, this is the first time I will be talking about the seeming downsides of doing any spiritual manifestation work. Recall that both our negative and positive strongly held feelings are attractive slash magnetic in nature and that the universe does not discern or care about what you ask for. The universe always gives us whatever is in line with our vibrations. It will give you whatever you ask for, whether consciously or unconsciously, without judging the rightness of it. Therefore, you may ask for something which is considered bad by others, but if you really ask for it and put yourself in alignment with it, you'll still get it. The universe simply does not judge. One thing I discovered after practicing these techniques was the need to deal with my residual fear-based intentions and vibrations from the past. Let me give you a simple example. Have you ever heard met one of those unreasonable or rude individuals at the grocery store, and fantasized about giving them a piece of your mind? or maybe giving your boss or nasty colleague a piece of your mind? Of course you would not have done it for real, but each time you observed your nasty colleague doing something that trialed you, you might have fantasized giving him or her a piece of your mind, and played that satisfying scenario over and over in your mind's eye just for the fun of it. I myself have fantasized over these scenarios even for just a fleeting moment. Guess what, whenever we feel strong emotions and feelings, regardless of the reasons we are feeling them for, our strong feelings are setting things into motion as future physical manifestations. And so, it was quite amusing to have a few of those instances actually come true for me once I started practicing the 95-5 code. Lots of my desired good came to me almost instantaneously. But I also found some of these undesired scenarios materializing for me really fast. It was a really valuable lesson in manifestation for me. Because it was then that I finally understood the impartiality and precision of these universal laws. They work for whatever you ask for. The universe always gives you exactly what you ask for, whether consciously or unconsciously. By replaying a scenario over and over in my mind vividly, even though I was just fantasizing for the kick of it, I was actually setting a strong intention to have a similar experience in my physical reality. When I cleared all the negative feelings and worries that were standing in the way of my manifestations, these seemingly negative scenarios manifested in my life for me as well. Therefore, when I found myself in those unpleasant situations, a part of me was secretly saying, Oh my! These laws actually work. Look at what's happening now. So I was able to recognize the humor of the universe and move on. I feel inspired to add a few paragraphs about this subject here because a small portion of readers may start having certain bad things come true for them along with the good stuff they have always asked for. Recognize that this is a natural consequence of your residual vibrations and what you have asked for in the past. All is always well. Now some of you may be reading this and find yourselves worried about whether bad things will start happening to you out of the blue. There is absolutely no cause for concern as things never happen out of the blue for no reason at all. Note that apart from the one or two isolated incidents, nothing bad or untoward has happened to me. I had tons and tons of ever-flowing, 
endless good stuff and just two of these seemingly negative experiences coming true for me by comparison. Therefore, do not be worried that bad things you conjured in the past will suddenly start happening for you, because many of those bad intentions would have been erased or countered by your subsequent and numerous good intentions for well-being and safety. This is the purpose of the time buffer which is to allow yourself to clarify your intentions. The reason why those one or two incidents still happened for me was because I was feeling neutral about them a lack of manifestation stock points, and because I had rehearsed those scenarios over and over again, each time feeling strong and vivid emotions. In other words, by repeatedly visualizing them, I was wanting them. At the same time, since those scenarios did not really threaten my safety or well-being, I was not setting counter-intentions that pushed them away from me. Thus, when I let go of the general fears and worries that were holding my other manifestations apart from me, these manifestations came true for me as well. So don't worry, bad things will not happen to you once you start practicing these techniques. On the contrary, all the good that you desire will start happening for you very quickly. This recommended affirmation by Abraham Hicks is perhaps the most apartment for use here, today, no matter where I'm going, no matter what I am doing, and no matter who I'm doing it with, it is my dominant intent to look for that which I'm wanting to see. And it is so. Chapter 5, Understanding the 5 in the 95-5 Code So far, we have established the main reason why manifestation techniques do not produce results for most people. The reason is because they are focused on the wrong aspects of the process. They are channeling excessive amounts of time and energy into 5% of the process when they should be broadening their awareness to what takes place 95% of the time. This often neglected 95% makes all of the difference. When you successfully change what goes on during 95% of your conscious waking awareness, you would have produced huge changes in your outer reality. So much so that you would be a completely different person both on the inside and outside. In this chapter, we'll talk about the 5 in the 95-5 code. In other words, what you should be doing during the 5%, or less, of your time. This is the time in which you actively state your intentions or engage in visualization and meditation exercises. Before we go into greater detail on what to do, let us get a few common misconceptions out of the way. The first one, a biggie, is that there is no right way to engage in all of these manifestation techniques. As I've repeated numerous times across all my books, it is useful to give up the idea that there is a right way in which you should carry out all these techniques. New readers often worry about whether they are doing things right, and whether they are following the steps exactly as written. I once read a wonderful book teaching spiritual manifestation exercises, and while I found the book to be absolutely superb, I saw readers commenting in the reviews section that the author was not clear enough on whether they should be breathing this way or that way. Hence, readers were not sure whether they were doing things right. Can you identify the manifestation stuck point here that was preventing some readers from applying those techniques? That's right, the stuck point is, there is a right way to do these techniques, and I don't know what it is since the author did not describe it clearly. Now applying what we have learnt in the previous few chapters, and since we cannot get the author to change his writing. Let's see if we can think around that stuck point and instantly produce outer results. How about, there is no right way to do these techniques as long as I do it. Now that sounds better and more resourceful. Or how about, whatever works is what works for me. 
these techniques are a wonderful starting point. In fact, this is the very mindset and attitude I adopt when I learn any new manifestation techniques. I see them as a starting point to reinforce whatever I already know, and to allow greater good to come into my life. A simple shift in perception can make the difference between having no results and amazing results. So instead of getting hung up on whether you are doing things right, just go out there and have fun. Just do it already. Back in my earlier days, I was always worried that these techniques would not work if I was distracted. For example, if I was doing them in a fairly noisy place with some noise. I would get irritated and agitated that I wasn't in a quieter place where these techniques could work better. Can you see the manifestation stock point here again? These techniques can only work if I do them in an absolutely quiet place. Which is a totally absurd stuck point. Since I made that one up for myself. It caused me to feel agitated each time there was some noise as I was trying out these techniques, or each time someone interrupted me when I tried them. Can you now see how we are always imposing these ridiculous limitations on ourselves? Understanding the manifestation stuck points concept will allow you to get past all these frivolous thinking easily and effortlessly. When I thought around those stuck points, I changed it to, these techniques work no matter where I try them, as long as I do them. I can tell you today that all these techniques work no matter where I do them. Even if I am interrupted halfway while doing them. Or if I get distracted somehow, I no longer feel agitated or irritated about it. I just smile, go back to what I was doing and simply repeat it again. A simple change in perception produces massive changes in outdoor results. The second major misconception is that you need to do them. Here's one of the biggest and most counterintuitive secrets ever. There is no need to even engage in this 5%, if you do not want to. Therefore, the 5 in the 95-5 code is completely optional and not compulsory. That's right. Let me repeat it again, all of this work is optional and up to you. You can choose not to engage in any of it and still have all your good flowing to you, as long as you take note of the other 95%. Therefore, you can stop doing this work right now if you feel obliged or forced to do it. When I reached this level of understanding and realization for myself, I immediately dropped all of the forceful asking I was doing. From doing lots of it every single day and walking around like an affirmation machine, I dropped all of that and just allowed myself to be. I allowed myself to be the whole complete and free being that I always was, and always have been. With absolutely no need to ask or engage in any outer directed actions. Instead, I focused my energies on the 95 and the 95-5 code. And all the good I desired flowed to me, and more. Nowadays, I do very little of the 5 in the 95-5 code. In fact, my actual percentage should be closer to 1-3% to when we base it on the amount of time spent daily. But that 1% produces massive results for me. Because I am now leveraging the immense power of that 1% through the remaining 99% of my day. When you put the 95-5 code into practice. Amazing things start happening for you and more good than you ever imagined comes into your life. I am not saying this to make you feel good, but because I live it and know it is truly possible for every single person who is willing to spend the time to do this work. This is possibly the easiest work you'll ever do in your life. And yet the results are massive. So give up the need to try any techniques or force yourself to do them if you do not feel like it. I set a target to spend some quiet time with myself three times a day, for 5 to 10 minutes each. But do I do it every single day? 
On certain days I am so caught up with things and a packed schedule that I do not have the time to do it three times a day. Still, the good has not stopped flowing to me because my eyes are never off that 95 in the 95-5 code. When you truly understand the 95-5 code, the 5 is optional. Now that we have these two major misconceptions out of the way, let us look at the 5 in the 95-5 code. As suggested, all the active techniques that you engage in should take up no more than 5% of your time. That is a good guidance and starting point to begin with. If you are spending more than 72 minutes, that's 5%, a day engaged in active manifestation techniques. Such as chanting mantras, affirmations, new age healing techniques, energy work, spells and so on. You are likely to be counterproductive instead of productive. That's because you are spending more than required to produce massive results in your life. I know of readers who spend hours on in doing these techniques repeatedly. I used to be one of them too. I would walk around with a stack of self-help books and a long list of techniques to try, one after another. To be honest, it wasn't fun for me. Because I found it all to be like a chore. It was like forcing myself to go through the motions, yet I was worried that if I stopped doing any of them things wouldn't happen for me. Can you infer the inner state of someone who acts like that? His inner state would be filled with worry and desperation. He wants what he wants so badly that he keeps doing these techniques over and over again, hoping for things to happen faster. And that very inner state is contrary to the one needed for your manifestations to occur in the first place. Therefore, the first step is to take a good look at the time spent practicing these active techniques. Are you spending more than one hour each day? If so, it might be a good idea to free up some of that time. Reading time does not count, as reading is not an active manifestation technique. Once you have made the conscious decision to cut down on the time spent doing these active techniques, what should you do during this sacred time? What should you do during the 5% of your time? As mentioned above, once you live in a truly manifestative inner state, no outer actions are necessary. You literally are at the right place at the right time. People, events and circumstances seem to revolve and happen around you. But I know it may not be possible to give up all of your outer direct and actions all at once. You may still choose to engage in some of them for the time being. So these following suggestions may be useful for you. For me, I still choose to engage in these spiritual exercises because they feel just so good to me. I do them not because I want to make anything happen on the outside, but because I am reconnecting with and really becoming aware of the divinity within me when I do them. If you will adopt this mindset when practicing the 5 and the 95-5 code, your manifestations will happen effortlessly because you are no longer pushing against reality with a sense of desperation and hurry. Instead, you would be allowing yourself to be carried along by the forward momentum and flow of the universe. Relaxation and ease is really the key here. Now let's take a look at how I do it. Chapter 6 how I spend my sacred manifestation time. Since I engage in so few of these activities nowadays, I consider my time spent on them to be really sacred. It is an important part of the day for me, and I treat this 5 to 10 minutes with the utmost veneration and respect. In the past, when I spent hours on in trying to get these techniques to work, it was like forcing myself to go through the external motions just to get it over and done with. I did not care about the internal changes that were happening. As a result, no lasting internal changes happened. My focus was solely on when I could get my stuff. 
the moment I started practicing the 95-5 code, I began to see this 5% as an integral part of the whole. This 5% is like planting a seed in the whole energy field, allowing my intentions to be amplified and leveraged upon effortlessly through the other 95%. Think of this as dropping a beautiful pebble in a pond. The 5% is where the pebble hits the water, and the remaining 95% is where the ripples extend all around. Both work to complement each other. I choose to engage in my sacred time thrice a day, for around 5 to 10 minutes each time. I do not keep track of the precise time spent, as that would set up expectations that I need to be spending a certain amount of time. I do not use a timer or clock. Instead, I let whatever that happens be okay. Sometimes I feel inspired to spend a little more time doing this 5%. And on other days, I get the feeling that what I have done is sufficient and enough for the day. As always, listen to your inner nudges and intuition. The messages that your higher self send you are always leading you towards your greater good, if you'll listen to them purely enough. I usually choose a particular window of the day in which I know I will not be interrupted for the next half hour or so. This frees up my mind from any worries of interruption. The way I have done it is to rearrange the furniture in my room to be as comfortable as possible. One place where I engage in my sacred time is in my office, and I recommend that you move your furniture around a bit to suit your manifestation routine. Buy a new plush armchair if necessary or even a simple cushion which can be propped behind your back or under your neck. All of this is valuable investment that will make your manifestation journey much more enjoyable and rewarding. Due to space constraints, I gave up on the idea of having a full-sized plush armchair in my office. However, I did shop around for a comfortable plush neck pillow. It was another intention I put out which subsequently manifested on one of my shopping trips. I knew the moment I saw the orange pillow that it would be perfect for my manifestation needs, although it was marketed to drivers for use on long road trips. The lesson here is that the universe is always standing by to provide whatever support you may need. So use the help provided by the universe. Ask for help to manifest your desires in the form of equipment furniture or location, even when it is for something seemingly small such as locating the right neck pillow for your manifestation time. Once I found a small orange neck pillow that was right for me, the quality of my sacred manifestation time improved considerably. I could now lie back comfortably in my office chair with the orange pillow propped under my neck for support. I felt physically comfortable. The first key is to ensure that you are physically comfortable in whatever position you choose to be in. There is no need to be lying down flat, I have found this position to be counterproductive for me, and there is no need to be sitting up straight with the spine erect either, as in meditation. I have chosen to just lie back in my office chair, ensuring that my back and neck is well supported. This position seems to work best for me, and you'll need to experiment to see what's suitable for you. By best, I mean the one that makes you feel the most comfortable, and not the one that produces the most manifestations. Any position is alright so long as you feel comfortable with it, and everyone is different. I have personally found some recommended positions to be really uncomfortable for me such that I focused on my discomfort more than my actual intentions. So don't take any written instructions as gospel. Next, our physical surroundings are important because small distractions may cause our focus to suddenly jump from our inner world to our outer environment. As much as possible, we want to keep our focus inwards. Especially in the beginning. Distractions such as noise and light may cause our focus to be disturbed, although the more you practice this, 
the more you'll be able to maintain your focus for longer periods of time. For a start, I do everything I can, that includes putting the phone on silent, locking the doors and turning out all the lights in the room for my really sacred time. This is the time I'm spending exclusively with my higher self. I start off by taking three deep breaths. Again, as I've explained in my other books such as The Magic Feeling, three is an arbitrary number and it helps me relax completely. It is important that you don't just go through the motions when taking three deep breaths. Instead, I really feel the energy in each breath. I feel the sacredness in each breath. I know that when I'm breathing, I'm moving energy. I feel goosebumps and a pleasant, warm feeling all over my body. Real changes in the energetic environment are occurring. As I breathe in, I feel the energy moving all around my body. Therefore, my breath is really doing something, it is moving energy all around my body. I am not just doing some mindless action. After taking my three deep breaths, I continue breathing as usual and turn my focus inwards. Years of meditation practice has helped me do this fairly easily, although if you have never meditated, you may continually find your mind's focal point coming to rest on something outside of you. For example, you may be thinking about external objects like your chair or your computer. When that happens, simply recognize that you are focused on something external and bring that focal point back to the inside of your body. Rest your awareness on the inside of your body. By doing so, you are turning your focus from the outer physical world into the inner spiritual world. There are two spots in the body which I recommend resting your conscious awareness on. We will focus on one of them here. Once again, this will not be easy to do in the beginning and you may find it somewhat unnatural, especially if you have never meditated or engaged in any kind of spiritual practice before. However, it is important to turn your attention inwards because we are now making a journey into the inner spiritual world. We are taking a closer look at and changing our inner states, instead of trying to make things happen on the outside. When you make the needed changes on the inside, outer reality will match up automatically, and it is all you need to do. So for a moment, give up any thoughts or concerns about the outer physical world. Leave all of that behind and turn inwards. The spot where I place my conscious awareness on is in the center of my head, between my eyes and right in the middle of my brain. If you imagine your head as a ball, this will be right at the center, core of it, probably somewhere towards the top. This is also the spot where many spiritual practitioners have recommended. I let my conscious awareness rest there because it feels good and natural. Once I have done my three deep breaths and settled my conscious awareness in the center of my head, I state my affirmations and visualize, while breathing normally. Once again, I must clarify that I do very little of this nowadays, because my manifestations are all coming into being and everything in my outer environment pleases me. However, this may not be the case for someone who is just starting to become a deliberate creator. As such, it may be necessary in the beginning to engage in these steps just to get things going. But rest assured that when things start happening for you, they'll be happening so quickly and completely that you'll find very little need to constantly do these techniques. For ease of explanation. Let's assume that there is a situation or problem that you perceive, and you desire for this situation to be improved. Therefore in this framework, I would take three deep breaths slowly, and let my conscious awareness settle in the center of my head. I would take as much time as needed to do this and not rush things. Often, it will feel like a long time has passed such that you feel the urge to hurry and speed things up. But be assured that when you open your eyes, 
only a few minutes in physical time would have passed. We often do not have a good grasp of the flow of time when we turn inwards. Once your awareness is centered in your head, state your affirmations, intentions and visualize the harmonious outcome that you are asking for. If it is a particular sum of money you need, see yourself sitting there, feeling happy and satisfied that you already have that sum of money. It may be useful to read the relevant chapters from It Is Done, as well as the useful reminders about manifesting money from my book by Money Secrets to learn the specifics about manifesting money. For now, we are just going to be talking about the general mechanics of the process. It is important that you do all of this and give up absolutely any need to make things happen. You're doing all of this not to make anything happen but because it feels so good for you. You're doing it because it feels good to experience that feeling of exhilaration and relief. What you'll feel are simultaneous good feelings that well up from using your imagination in this directed manner. Feel these good feelings and let them wash over you. Let the good feelings culminate and peak. This is what I refer to as a peaking moment. Again. You are letting the good feelings come to an overwhelming peak not because you want anything to happen on the outside, but because it feels so good for you. Stay there for as long as you can. I usually stay there until I receive an inner click, upon which I know that it is done. And I can return once again to my outer world. Now if you somehow get interrupted while doing any of these, here are two good ways to handle distractions. The first type of distractions are intervening thoughts. For example, your mind may suddenly drift to concerns and thoughts about work. I have found that distracting thoughts tend to happen more for me when I am tired. I therefore recommend that you do this work when you are well rested and have the ability to concentrate. I find that if I do this when I am sleepy, I would either drift off to sleep or have a hard time maintaining my inner focus. If distracting thoughts do surface for you, just acknowledge them and gently guide your awareness back to your conscious intentions. Do not entertain nor try to fight them. Just acknowledge them and let them go. The second type of distractions are external. For example, someone may suddenly knock on the door or walk in on you. In the beginning, I used to be very irritated by such distractions such that my mood would be spoiled because I thought my manifestations were not going to work anymore. It is useful to give up this stuck point for yourself right now. If you are interrupted, simply do whatever you need to do to take care of the interruption and then go right back to whatever you were visualizing before. It is alright to just go back and continue where you left off. If I need to state an intention out loud in my mind and I am interrupted, or I feel that I did not do it properly, I just stop, and go back and repeat it. No bad feelings. I repeat it until I am satisfied it went well. Do not invest excessive energy into worrying about interruptions, or feeling irritated by them. After I have immersed myself into a conducive inner state for long enough, I usually receive an inner nudge that it is done. It is a very assuring, deep sense of inner peace and satisfaction. It comes from within, and there are no external signs to cue me that my manifestations are complete, I just know it on the inside. When that happens, I again take three deep breaths, once again. Do not rush through them. Feel the relaxation and energy flowing all over my body, open my eyes and go about my day. It is done. This is all you need to do, if you feel compelled to take some outer directed action, especially at the beginning. However as I've explained over and over again, even the steps above are optional. What's compulsory is the 95 in the 95-5 code. You must watch how you feel 95% of the time. 
you must watch your inner state for most of the time. If only you'll do so, the rest will take care of itself. If you feel adventurous and want to be surprised by the goodness of the universe, you can absolutely eschew the steps above and still have good things happening to you. Let us now talk about how to live the 95 in the 955 code. Chapter 7 Living the 95 in the 955 code. If I were to summarize the key to fast and effective manifestations in one sentence, it would be this. Think around your manifestation stuck points that continually trip you up on the inside. Do whatever you can to think around them. That's all there is to it. There is no big secret out there which you have to pay money to learn. No esoteric techniques that are somehow withheld from you which you have to spend years of spiritual practice trying to master. The essence of manifesting your desires can be eloquently expressed in one single sentence, manifestation is about learning how to think around your manifestation stuck points, plain and simple. Once you have learned how to think around them, things will never be the same for you again. Of course, doing so isn't going to be easy at first glance. The reason why you may have those stuck points in the first place is because you perceive them as actual obstacles and limitations standing between yourself and your desires. In other words, they are all very real reasons as to why you cannot have what you want. But remember that all limitations are self-imposed, and no matter how real those limitations seem to you at any moment, they can be dissolved and the situation changed. On the contrary, the more you allow yourself to be transfixed by the illusion of those limitations, the more you solidify them permanently in place through your continued focus, insistence on them, and make it extremely difficult for yourself to experience an alternative reality where your desires are already manifest. The easiest way to dissolve any perceived limitations, no matter what they may be, is to find creative ways to think around them, instead of constantly trying to fight against them and deny their existence. Therefore, manifesting anything is always an inner exercise in mental focus. When you allow yourself to straighten out the kinks on the inside no matter how long you've had them, your outer manifestations have to follow. This process is a part of our universal creative laws that are always unfailing and dependable, no matter what you are trying to create. Some of you may argue hard against the use of my word illusions. These manifestation stuck points may not seem illusory to you. But I can tell you, having gone through this process time and time again that they are just that mere illusions that we perceive to be the problem. Even the hardest and most stubborn of illusions can be dissolved by simply changing our perceptions, because these perceived barriers are not even real in the first place. So give up the reasons for why you cannot change them, or think around them, just because you've had them for such a long time. One of the most common excuses I've heard for not being able to give up any of these self-imposed limitations is because we have been stuck with them for the longest time. But why should the length of time we've had to put up with something dictate whether we can get rid of it right now, or within the next few hours? Even that in itself is a manifestation stuck point. Give all of those up. Think around them. I would like to recount a recent example to illustrate the above. Granted that the following example is more of an unmanifestation rather than a manifestation scenario, in which I was trying to undo something I had previously created by mistake. But it illustrates the point of not allowing oneself to be stuck on self-imposed limitations beautifully. Here goes, just recently. I found myself signing a two-year mobile phone contract online, in my hurry to get a new phone as a gift for a family member. Shortly after I had done so, I realized I had made the wrong choice, 
as I should have transferred my plan to another provider for a much cheaper price. Now I was stuck with something I did not want that was financially unfavorable to me, and I was beating myself up over it. I spent the next two hours fuming and cursing at my mistake, and making myself feel bad by performing additional calculations showing that I had indeed, chosen wrongly. Now I was faced with a penalty had I decided to cancel the signed contract, and the more I thought about what I had done, the lousier I felt. So I fumed and felt extremely bad for the entire afternoon. Now I have not felt this bad for a long time. For years in fact. But something about this incident just made me feel so bad. It so happened that I was working on the draft of this book, and I decided to look at my manifestation stuck points. Why was I feeling so miserable? Why was I feeling so stuck? I was feeling stuck because I perceived the contract as signed, and that the company would not allow me to change it without charging a huge penalty. I was feeling bad because I saw no way to change the situation. Sounds familiar? Finally, I decided that I had enough stewing and fuming. And decided to take a shower to clear my mind a little. That was when I felt an inner nudge from within, and I realized I had been so foolish to allow myself to be stuck on a self-imposed manifestation stuck point. Why don't you just call them up and see what they can do for you? I had previously denied myself that possibility, because I had argued so hard in favor of my self-imposed limitations. Which was my firm belief that the company would not possibly accede to my requests. I had dealt with them before, and a contract was a contract. But by then, I had gotten past my manifestation stuck point. I had thought around it and foreseen a new possibility for myself. Just the thought of a new possibility made me feel so much better than how I was feeling the hour before. The first signs of relief that you'll feel will always be on the inside, even before the physical signs start manifesting. I was now in a better place. The moment I stepped out of the shower, I made a call to the company and 15 minutes later, Cancelled the contract with a $30 penalty and thousands of dollars saved. The whole process was so easy that I did not even have to explain myself over the phone. All I did was to tell them that I wanted the contract cancelled, and it was done. I am convinced now that universal forces orchestrated my desired outcome once I was able to straighten out the kinks in my inner thinking and give up any negative or bad feelings about my situation. In fact, I felt a sudden impulse to phone the company, whereas just a few moments ago I was cursing them, stewing at them and imagining every single worst possible outcome ever. But the whole incident was settled in an easier manner than I could have imagined. That is the power you have when you are aligned with the greater flow of the universe. The reverse is true. When you are trying to go against the flow of the universe, you feel miserable and powerless to do anything. The objects or outcomes we are trying to manifest here do not matter. It could just have easily been a new car, or a new relationship or a new job as opposed to the cancellation of a mobile phone contract. But the universe never discerns between what you want. Whatever desire you use these techniques on does not matter. Once you have dealt with your manifestation stuck points and use the active manifestation techniques as outlined in the previous chapter, what should you do during the rest of your time? Should you wake up and think about your manifestations most of the time until you fall asleep at night? Should you keep repeating your intentions and affirmations out loud whenever you have the chance to? Should you visualize your desires repeatedly? By now, you should know that all these are active actions, which means that it is not recommended that you spend more than 5% of your day engaging in them. 
so leave all those actions to the 5% of your day when you are purely engaged in active manifestation techniques. Do none of them during the remaining 95% of your day. Instead, the remaining 95% of your day is for your living and enjoyment only. Don't squander it by wondering how and when your desires will come to you. That's a waste of valuable energy that can be directed elsewhere. The remaining 95% of your day is for you to express yourself in the most creative way possible. It is for you to savor and enjoy, not to worry about whether a particular outcome will result. Or whether the things you ask for will come true. After you have set your intentions and become clear on them, let them go. Immediately go do something else, which means. Go about your day in the usual manner, doing what you normally have to do. I like to fully immerse myself in either work or play, as I find that this frees my mind from thinking about my intentions and desires frequently. I now know that they are taken care of by the safe hands of the universe, and that universal forces have already been set into motion in response to my intentions and desires. So what more is there for you to worry about? In the moment that you get clear about something, it is done. What you should do after setting your intentions and desires, during the 5% or less of your day is to immerse yourself wholeheartedly into living life to the fullest. If you are currently engaged in any job or livelihood, put your heart and mind into your job and perform it to the best of your abilities. Rest in the assurance that whatever you ask for is already done, and on its way. If you find it difficult to do so, if intruding thoughts of worries and fears keep creeping back into your conscious awareness, First be thankful for those worrying thoughts because they are a sure sign that you have not completely dealt with your manifestation stuck points. It follows that if you resolve most of your manifestation stuck points, intruding thoughts and worries will no longer creep into your awareness as frequently. So if worrying thoughts keep coming back, take a close look at their content without engaging, entertaining them. Take a close look at the triggering thought. What is the first thought usually about? You'll be able to infer what you are stuck on. For example, if you are constantly worried about whether something will come to you, then your stuck point could be related to not trusting in these laws, and not generally trusting that you have set your intentions well enough. Reading this and similar books that explain the process will give you more ways to get past these manifestation stuck points. I like to do something completely different after I have set my intentions. Deliberate distraction is often the key here so that intruding thoughts have no chance to occupy my awareness. For example, I like to bring myself to beautiful places for a stroll or to engage myself in one of my hobbies wholeheartedly. The two to three hours you spend engaging in your hobbies without a care for the world creates an opening through which the universe can work its magic and dissolve any self-imposed boundaries or limitations, simply because you are no longer insisting on their existence through your continued focus on them. This is key. Which is why I keep returning to this same point over and over again. Do whatever you can to take your mind off what you have just asked for, and the omnipotent universe responds in the most beautifully way possible. Therefore, taking a walk and engaging in any form of physical exercise in which you are too engaged to think about anything else is often a good way to take your mind off things for a while. Pick up jogging, cycling, swimming or a sport if you have to. One hour of engaging in a moderately vigorous sporting activity not only does wonders for your health, but also for your manifestations. I am living proof of it. If you set your desires and visualize, meditate in a particular room of your house, 
It is often a good idea to get out of the house and start moving about on the outside so your physical location will not remind you of the intentions you have just set. Very often, I see individuals who spend so much time visualizing at home that just being in that place reminds them of their unmanifested desires. That is certainly not a position you want to find yourself in. As I was in my early days, I was trying out all these techniques and actions for such a huge portion of the day that I literally allowed myself to remain stuck in my own routine. I would wake up, try the techniques in vain, and then go to sleep. And this went on over and over again. Is it any wonder that very little changed? Even my physical routine was the same. Break out of any physical routine you may have that is built around your active manifestation activities. Make a conscious decision right now to spend only 5% of your time, or less, engaged in those active manifestation activities, and the remaining 95% of your time really living life. Initially, you may feel empty or weird when you have given up on your repeated asking. You may suddenly find yourself with lots of, or more, free time on hand. In which case, it is a good idea to see if you can replace that free time with fruitful and meaningful activities that you enjoy doing. In the past few years, I have signed up for interesting classes, picked up new hobbies and done things which I normally would not have done. All using the huge amount of time I previously spent visualizing and trying to make all these manifestation techniques work. Remember, your life is for living and not for you to engage in all these actions to ask or attract what you want. If you are spending disproportionate amounts of time on these actions and still not getting what you want, perhaps it is time to change tact. I have been surprised by all the good that has come to me ever since I adopted this new way of living. Even though I have greatly reduced the amount of time I have spent stating or visualizing my desires, the good that has come to me must have increased a thousandfold and keeps on coming in response to my greater allowance of it. Our good is always flowing to us. It does not ever stop flowing. The question is whether we are putting ourselves in a receptive inner state to receive it. Or is all our mental activity, all our negative mind chatter, interfering with our greater good? Give up the need to argue for why something cannot be yours, and stop dwelling on those stuck points for most of the time. And what you want will be yours when you get there in time. Chapter 8, Living the Immersion Technique Over the years, I have made it a point to constantly tune in and check how I am feeling on the inside. As mentioned, this can be difficult to do without any prior spiritual training since by default, our attention is always placed on something outside of ourselves. Notice how at this very moment, you are focused on the words on this page. That is something outside of yourself. You may be slightly lulled by the pleasant singing of birds, or the sound of traffic in the background. That again, is our focus on things outside of us. With so many things happening on the outside, we rarely check in to notice how we feel on the inside. It turns out that how you feel on the inside, your inner state, makes all the difference to your manifestation results. But we are all so numb and dull to that feeling. We perceive it as natural and always there. As I check inside of myself right now, I feel a deep inner sense of peace and calm. I feel a sense of assuredness and security. This is the inner state I have come to know as being conducive to manifestations. I also feel a bit of the magic feeling in the background, a feeling which I describe in my book of the same name. And I recognize the feeling as underlying everything, always there. But most people do not feel this way. When they take the time to turn inwards and check how they feel on the inside. First, 
they will encounter a sense of active resistance. Their ego will convince them to stop doing it, that it's silly or weird, and that there is nothing there. But no matter how weird or unnatural it seems, you must push past these feelings and be persistent with this exercise. We have been so conditioned to live by what goes on on the outside, and what is happening outside of us that we cannot bear to turn inwards for even a moment. But turning inwards is the key to being an effective and deliberate manifester. Only by always turning inwards can you start cultivating a conducive inner state. So for the next few moments, I would like you to sit quietly by yourself and turn your conscious awareness inwards. Sure, you will still be aware of the chair you're sitting on, or the words on this page. But turn your awareness inwards and notice what's happening on the inside. Notice how you are feeling on the inside. Take a reading of how you feel and just notice what is there. Is there a sense of deep inner calm and peace? Is there a sense of inner lightness? Or is there a tinge of worry and fear? For most people, there will be a slight tinge of worry or fear. One of disease or discomfort. But understand that these feelings arise from the negatively conditioned mind, which has been trained to spontaneously bring up these feelings over long periods of time. This is not our true nature. I was lying in bed one night and my thoughts drifted to the time I was a little boy. I had been born premature and grew up as an extremely shy and timid boy, always afraid of everything. That night, as I lay in my bed and drifted off to sleep, I somehow thought back to the time when I was little Richard. I then began to realize, somewhat surprisingly, as I stepped into my body back then, that I was constantly filled with an overwhelming and profound sense of fear. Suddenly, all those feelings came rushing back to me and they seemed all too real. I know those were the exact feelings I felt back then when I was a child, and continued to carry with me throughout my teenage years. That feeling of being fearful, worried and scared. Of being self-conscious. Was actually what I carried around with me all those years with such intensity. That was a huge revelation for me. In that moment, I received all the answers I needed. I knew why certain things in my life turned out the way they were, and why I lived a certain way as I was growing up. It was a liberating realization that confirmed everything I teach today. While I know today that our inner state influences our outer results and teach this truth passionately, going back to that time as a young boy allowed me to understand why certain things happened the way they did. I had always thought I was the victim of circumstances growing up, that people were somehow unkind or mean to me. I always thought I was the unlucky one, perhaps not vocalizing those words but subconsciously feeling them at a very deep level. But being transported back into how I was as a child that night and going back into my previous inner state confirms everything I now know today. How could things have been otherwise when I was always so worried and fearful? How could things have been otherwise when I was always so afraid of everything? I remember the fear as being intense. The good news is that as adults today, we have the power to change our inner states at will. No longer are we at the mercy of authority figures in our lives, who while having our best interests at heart, may themselves not fully comprehend these wonderful universal laws. Therefore we as adults today have the freedom to choose. In every moment, we can choose how we want to feel. And hence what we want to create. So check in right now and make a mental note of how you feel. I am not asking that you try and change the way you feel, but merely to recognize and notice how you feel. Just noticing it is enough. Do you feel 100% light, peaceful and calm? If so, your manifestations will be coming very quickly. Do you feel 80% light, peaceful and calm? 
with a 20% feeling of worry or uneasiness? If so, do not despair because the moment you drop and reduce that 20% down to zero, things will happen to you in such easy, effortless ways that you will be amazed. Make it your goal to get whatever negative feelings down to zero. That's the most important. I like to devote the next half of this chapter to walking you through the immersion technique, which I've found to be very useful for letting go of negative worries and living fully in the now. It does not matter what activity you choose for this immersion technique, but it should not be one of the active manifestation techniques that you do during the 5% of your time. In other words, it should not be any actions which you do to ask for your manifestations. The immersion technique can be used on anything else, for work, play, or even mundane activities like tidying your closet. Sometimes, I prefer to work on seemingly mundane activities just to clear my mind a little and create an opening for the universe to work its magic. The way to do the immersion technique is to immerse yourself fully, full-heartedly, in whatever activity you have at hand. For example, let's suppose that you have just done the 5 activities in the 95-5 code, and now you're switching modes and going back to your daily life. You are now living the 95 part of the 95-5 code. What you should do when living this 95 is to pick whatever activity that you have to do, and then immerse yourself fully in it. Let's suppose that the activity I have to do next is to draft an email to an associate at work. Instead of just mindlessly typing the email like you would do before, going through the motions of it, be extra aware and conscious of each step as you do it. This is not entirely the same as concentration or being in deep focus. Rather, do it with a sense of purpose. Let the act of drafting that email and typing it out fill your entire consciousness such that what you have just asked for while you were visualizing is completely out of your mind. Immerse yourself so wholeheartedly in whatever activity you are doing at hand that you completely forget what you asked for. The same goes for other activities you may choose to engage in. Suppose that you choose to go shopping for groceries after you engaged in active manifestation. Instead of doing what you've always done in the past, which is to shop for groceries mindlessly, going through the motions, while letting your thoughts float to your usual worries or desires, make it a point to immerse yourself completely in the shopping for groceries. Notice the labels, the freshness of the produce, the texture, the sights, the sounds and the colors. Notice things that you haven't noticed before. Develop a genuine interest in everything that goes on around you. Observe people and their emotions. Feel happy for them. When you engage yourself with full awareness, when you are 100% present in any moment, you are living to your fullest potential. You are engaged to the maximum. If you need to be in conversation with someone, then become super aware and present when you're having the conversation. Don't pretend to listen and let your mind be somewhere else. No matter how trivial or mundane the conversation may be, be fully present and notice everything the other person is saying. Notice the words coming out of your mouth and how you formulate the responses in your mind. Notice how much you are enjoying the interaction and the conversation. This is the art of full immersion, and the art of being completely in the present moment. Why is it important to live in this manner? You may think that all this is just a spiritual exercise, something which has been expounded and espoused by so many New Age writers on being here now, or being fully aware and present. But it is not just a new watch fat or concept. This practice brings about tangible benefits to your life. First, you'll notice yourself enjoying life more. You'll be fully living and savoring each moment as it goes by. Instead of savoring only half of the moment. 
and spending the other half in some imagined world of your problems. You'll realize what it means to be truly alive. I've always found it interesting that individuals especially in modern times have taken to more and more extreme activities that push the boundaries of excitement or thrill. They have been increasingly willing to go for adrenaline rushing activities, all in the name of seeking that new high. But do you know why they are even seeking that high in the first place? Many of them are looking for sensory stimulation beyond what daily activities can provide. They want something that can deliver them to a higher place of exhilaration and good feeling, hence all the almost dangerous, daredevil and sometimes even illegal activities. Doing so is like trying to increase the flow of water when your pipes are clogged by connecting it to larger and larger pumps when a simpler solution is just to unclog the pipes or increase the size of the pipelines. An individual who is fully engaged in very moment and who is always present feels the full exhilaration and joy of life. That sense of joy and enthusiasm is so intense and overwhelming that it permeates every single cell of your body. It's like the best feeling in the world and you can be immersed in it round the clock if you want to. It is the magic feeling that produces instant manifestations. It's the highest high one can possibly get, and there is no limit to how good you can feel. Once you realize this truth and experience this state that can be obtained from turning inwards, you'll not see the need to engage in any of those outer activities just to get that temporary high or to make something happen on the outside. Perhaps the most counterintuitive realization about living in this manner is that once you fully immerse yourself into each present moment, not caring for either the future or the past, you don't even care about whether your desires become manifest or not. You're too busy living in the now moment and feeling the good feelings of it to care about the past or worry about the future. You start to find joy in everything that you do, no matter how mundane it seems. And because of your newfound attitude of hootlessness and divine indifference, things will then start happening for you. When you truly give up caring whether you'll get everything you've asked for and just focus on feeling good in each moment. What you ask for has to come. Chapter 9, The Universe Holds Your Intentions in Escrow Just yesterday evening while spring cleaning, I came across a beautiful golden book of affirmations and intentions I had written down many years ago. What surprised me as I flipped through the pages was the number of intentions that manifested exactly the way I had written them. Reading through what I had written brought back many fond memories. Those desires came true even though I had forgotten about the notebook shortly after writing those intentions down over a period of several months in my life, never to pick it up again until a few years later. As Abraham Hicks always teach, our desires are held in escrow for us until we are ready to receive them. We become ready by aligning with the vibrational essence of what we are asking for. And so in the moment we ask for something, it is done. This example beautifully illustrates that we only have to ask for our intentions and desires only once. As long as we do so and not contradict them through our own manifestation stuck points, limiting beliefs and counter intentions, what we have asked for is held in escrow for us until we are ready for it. It is all lined up waiting to be delivered. I would not have realized this point so strongly had I not found this old notebook of mine. Some of the intentions and desires were long forgotten by me. I had forgotten about the specifics and details of those intentions, and yet they were delivered to me in perfect harmony and order. Truly, the universe does not forget and always remembers every little minute detail about what we have asked for. We only have to be open to the whole experience and trust. 
so don't worry about keeping a book of your highest intentions and desires. If anything, those are for your reference only. The universe needs no reminders. After reading through the handwritten notebook of beautiful intentions, I did something which, a few short years ago, would have been absolutely unthinkable. I threw the book in the wastebasket, letting it go from my life. A few years ago, I would have held onto the notebook like it was a precious treasure. But I know today that the lesson is complete. I truly understand the life lessons and principles contained within this experience that has come full circle. I noticed that I peppered the front of the book with proclamations to the universe, on how I hoped the universe would deliver everything written in the book to me in divine timing and order. But I need not have written those words. I realize today that those words were ultimately for my own understanding only. They served only as a reminder to myself, and not as a message to the universe. The universe would have delivered whatever I wanted in perfect divine timing and order whether I made those statements or otherwise, how can it be done in any other way? And hence, I made the decision to let the book go from my life, because I know today that the universe always delivers whatever we want to us in the most harmonious way possible. There is no need to engage in any outer actions such as repeatedly writing our intentions down, reading them or keeping the book close at hand. There are many readers who ascribe the magic to a particular notebook of intentions, or to certain words and phrases written down. There is value in all of those practices, but that is not where the magic truly is. The magic resides in our own inner state and it is our non-resistive, light inner state that makes things magnetically happen on the outside. The power does not lie in the notebook of intentions which we write and keep around. It does not lie in the repeated reading of what we have written down. As mentioned, all these repeated actions serve as reminders for ourselves only. And for many, they can be a source of comfort and motivation. However, if the repeated writing and reading of affirmations stirs up feelings of discomfort or discouragement for you, then you would certainly be better off without the practice. Tailor your daily practice such that it suits you, and makes you feel best. You can live the rest of your life without engaging in any of these outer directed activities and still have everything you want come true for you in your life. These outer directed actions are always optional but the inner work is mandatory. When you first start living in this manner, by being fully present and immersed in all of life, and by eliminating any feelings of worry or fear from your life, you'll start to see changes quickly. At first, and actually instantly, the results you observe will be a drastic change to the way you feel inside. You'll feel emotionally freer and lighter, as if that huge rock that has been weighing you down in the past is now gone. You would feel less self-conscious. And you would also be able to see the humor in a lot more situations. That is the immediate benefit of putting the 95-5 code in practice. The second thing that will happen is that manifestations will occur that seem to be unrelated to the major things which you are asking for. These smaller manifestations will start popping up for you all over the place. And they'll keep happening over and over again for you. For example, you may have a thought of wouldn't it be nice to dine at this restaurant and have this experience. And the very next day, a friend invites you out for dinner at this exact same restaurant. None of this has to be forced. It all happens naturally and spontaneously. I hardly find myself in situations where I have to queue. Everything is just smooth selling and fast for me. I will go to a restaurant and there is a perfect spot ready for me, with the perfect food on the menu. I've also noticed that after I sit down and order my food that the restaurant fills up really fast. These are the spontaneous little things, 
the little miracles that give you an indication that things are truly lining up. Another fun experience I've had was to feel like not going for an appointment, and then have the other person tell me he can't make it, without me having to cancel the appointment. In other words, the universe precedes your desires and delivers everything that is just right for you, whether in physical objects or physical experiences. I am spending some time describing what it feels like here because some of you may be wondering when the big stuff is going to come. After so many years, I've understood that when all the seemingly small stuff starts lining up, that is when a whole lot of energy, and momentum, is moving all that big stuff into place as well. Remember that the size of our requests is only relative and the universe does not discern between any of those. So focus on your inner state and what you do during 95% of your time, and the universe will take care of the rest. If you find it difficult to keep your mind away from your intentions and desires, or from worrying about them, then use the full immersion technique that I shared in the previous chapter. Immerse yourself completely in living your life and become extremely aware of every single small detail and now moment as you are going through the experience. Do this for the next task, and then the next, and the next. And so on throughout the day. If you'll remind yourself to be fully engaged for your normal waking activities, you will be turning away so completely from what you have asked for that the universe is free to do its planning and magic. The full immersion technique focuses your attention on what you can do. It focuses your attention on the part of the equation which you can change, which is living life the best you can, and taking care of whatever that comes up for you, as it comes up. Resist the urge to check reality for signs of your manifestation. It is hard for reality to change if you keep checking it. Before using the full immersion technique, I was constantly sitting around waiting for the universe to deliver the things I've asked for. I was constantly checking to see if things have changed on the outside, and if my stuff has arrived. Hence I would engage in those active manifestation techniques, sit around and wait. And then engage in those manifestation techniques some more. You would think that my constant asking for things would cause them to come faster into my life. But I can tell you today that my life was at a complete standstill. Nothing creative or productive was happening. I can now see that an individual who lives this way is not living his highest good as intended, but is living a life completely devoid of any creation. He thinks he is creating when all he is doing is in fact creating the same reality over and over again. Therefore, do not dismiss any aspect of your life as less important. Do your best and take care of what needs to be done at hand. Most individuals who start doing spiritual manifestation work tend to see the rest of their activities, their daily activities, as comparatively useless and start focusing exclusively on the practice of whatever manifestation techniques. They start spending inordinate amounts of time on the 5 in the 95-5 code, thinking it is what makes all the difference. That cannot be further from the truth. Life is for your joyful moment-to-moment -moment living, not to apply one manifestation technique after another. Live the best you can, with whatever you have on hand and soon the universe will deliver some surprises to you in the most amazing way possible. This quote by spiritual mystic Osho sums it up perfectly, if you cannot be a creator, if you cannot love work, if you cannot love life, then the only possibility for you is just to be a beggar. Like everyone else, I have errands to run, work to do. Some activities arguably more enjoyable than others. I have a life to live. But I do all of them fully immersed and engaged. Don't make the mistake of only doing things that you foresee can lead to a manifestation. Don't discern between activities that make things happen, 
and those that do not. Because at the end of the day, how would you know? The universe works in mysterious ways and I've been led on the path by having things turn out completely different from what was expected. So always listen to your inner impulse and not base your actions on whether they would achieve something on the outside. Even the mundane tasks are enjoyable because they allow me to take my mind off things and become fully focused on whatever is at hand. When I am so deeply immersed in the now moment, I am alive. Immersing yourself fully into the task at hand while you go about your daily activities turns out to be an extremely effective manifestation technique, as counterintuitive as it seems. It stops your wandering mind from questioning when and how something is going to come to you. It is the best way to take care of the intervening buffer time. If you will spend this buffer time living life comfortably, you wouldn't even mind the existence of it. It is only when you sit around and wait that it becomes extremely glaring and sticks out like a sore thumb. Have you ever sat around waiting for a package to arrive in the mail? You know, the why is it not here yet feeling and it does drive us nuts. The simplest solution is just to go do something distractingly fun in the meantime. Chapter 10, Living the Way of the Great Master For years, I heard Abraham Hicks teach that the only journey one has to ever make is on the inside, an inner journey. The first time I heard it, I was extremely skeptical and in disbelief about this claim. What do you mean the only journey I have to make is on the inside? Making all these inner changes is certainly not going to lead to anything happening on the outside. I need to go out there and start doing something. Now show me what I have to do to get my stuff. I continued to be stuck on this point for many years. Until one day I finally realized through my life experience that it's all true. Every bit of it is true. The only journey anyone has to make. To have anything happen on the outside, is our inner journey on the inside. While that sounds simple enough to do, it is actually the most difficult journey to make. Sometimes even more so than any outer journey we will ever take because we are dealing with uncharted territory here. There are no ready maps. Most of us do not even take the time and effort to look inwards and make the much needed inner changes. That's why the good most people seek continue to remain out of reach for many of them. They're unwilling to really look inside and make the inner changes. Once you really do the work, no outer actions are necessary to make things happen. It is my absolute promise to you. In the final chapter of this book, I would like to take you through the profoundly simple three-part process again and talk about a practical way to deal with problems and issues that crop up throughout the day. When you first start practicing the 95-5 code, the first thing you'll invariably have to deal with are nagging thoughts of what if this does not work, or am I doing it the right way. Know that all these thoughts result from past negative conditioning that have been built up over a long period of time. Hence, even though you may consciously decide today to live the 95-5 code, these thoughts will still crop up in your conscious awareness from time to time. How you deal with them makes all the difference. With determination and practice, the frequency of these negative interfering thoughts will be reduced until you hardly get them at all. For me, I go through my day with very few negative thoughts popping into my conscious awareness. If it does, I quickly acknowledge it, recognize it for what it is, and send it back to where it came from. In other words, I do not entertain the thought nor allow myself to be consumed by it. I do not allow these negative thoughts to snowball. So at the beginning, you need to ensure that negative thoughts do not get bigger and bigger, until they consume the whole of your awareness. It is natural to have worry thoughts, 
or thoughts of things not working out especially if you have been disappointed countless times in the past. The mind always reverts to what it knows and what it is familiar with. Therefore, it keeps reminding you of the only reality which it has known. Bear in mind that you are on the brink of creating a whole new reality for yourself now that will soon become the new reference point. Hence, one practical way to deal with such worry thoughts, as they come up, is to remind yourself that the 5 in the 95-5 code is taking care of all the details. Everything is being taken care of, and there is nothing else I have to do. Whenever worry or fear thoughts came up for me spontaneously, whenever I found myself drifting off and worrying about whether things were indeed happening on the outside, I would immediately remind myself that the 5% of active manifestation activities I've done is taking charge of everything. Keep doing this each time a worry thought crops up for you, and they'll not even pop up in time to come. The converse is also true. If you keep allowing yourself to believe in negative thoughts when they come up, results will be slow in coming for you. Simply because you have not changed your inner state at all. I estimate that I probably had to remind myself around 20 to 50 times each day when I first started this process. You have to be relentless at changing your inner state if you want lasting changes to happen. Each time thoughts of what if this doesn't work crop up, assure yourself that things are being taken care of by the 5 in the 95-5 code. Then turn your mind away completely. Forget what you have asked for. You have done all the asking, and it is done. The second practical issue one may have to deal with are actual problems and issues that crop up throughout the day. This is different from spontaneous negative thoughts resulting from past conditioning, in that these are related to certain existing conditions in your life. For example, you may perceive a problem at work, or have a particular situation that needs to be urgently resolved. Your perception and noticing of this situation stirs up negative and unpleasant situations within you. Any situation that brings up negative feelings and emotions needs to be resolved, as those negative feelings and emotions will interfere with physical manifestations in other areas of your life as well. But how do you go about doing so? A few rules of thumb are handy here. I generally do not allow myself to stew over a problem for long. The longer I allow myself to brood over it, the worse I feel and the more negative energy I summon around the issue. Recall that it only takes 17 seconds of focus thought to set something into motion, so stewing over something for hours on end can indeed result in something unwanted down the road, which then has to be dealt with physically. While it may be difficult to do so in the beginning, you have to give up your wanting to feel bad in order to welcome greater good and manifestations in your life. This means you must have the willingness to look at the bigger picture. Would you rather have your manifestations and all the good you have asked for? Or allow yourself to stew and stay miserable on something for a few days on end just to be right? Once again, this is easier said than done. Certain issues are so in our faces that we sometimes miss the forest for the trees, but that is where your determination and discipline comes in. You must make feeling good such an overriding priority for yourself above everything else. You must condition yourself to take the high road every single time, even if it means letting the other person be right. Again, this is what Abraham Hicks mean when they say. Nothing is more important than that I feel good. I used to think that was such a narcissistic statement. I want my stuff, not just to feel good all day every day. But I now know how logical that statement by Abraham Hicks is, because feeling good is at the basis of everything. When you feel good 95% of your time, what you asked for during the other 5% of the time has to come true. 
I just cannot put enough emphasis on this. Conversely, if you allow yourself to feel miserable and lousy 95% of your time, no amount of concentrated visualization or firming will be able to take care of the negativity generated during the majority of your waking hours. Feeling good has to become an overriding priority for you to the exclusion of everything else. There will be situations in life, as you put all of this into practice, that get on your nerves. There will be situations that will test everything that you have learnt up to this point. There will be times you feel like giving up. My own limits were tested with the earlier incident I recounted. But if you remind yourself of these teachings often enough, you'll soon be able to recover from such unpleasant situations quickly. Avoid situations that throw your inner state into turmoil. A while back I was ordering a piece of furniture that failed to arrive on time, with each party denying their responsibility. The seller said they have already shipped it, while the courier said it had already been delivered. Throughout the whole episode, I adopted the stance of a neutral observer with the deep belief that everything was already settled. I could have reverted to my old mode of operation, which was to get angry at the seller for not handling it well enough, or with the courier for being so irresponsible. I could have expressed my anger or taken it out on them, but what's the use? They may have been prodded into action but that would have thrown my inner state into turmoil too, which can only lead to undesirable outcomes. Give up the need to be right, even if you are right. Your feelings are letting you know, in each moment, how things will turn out. I decided that feeling good was so important to me that I wasn't going to let myself be bothered by any of it. I kept reminding myself that the universe was taking care of all my affairs, even when external evidence appeared to be were on the contrary and when it seemed I was going to lose my money. I had such a sense of deep faith and belief that even when I met up with the seller to settle the incident, I thanked her genuinely and profusely for willing to work with me. In return, she was very nice and helpful about the whole incident and even gave me a free gift for my inconvenience. When you make that inner journey and get past your own manifestation stuck points, outer reality reciprocates in the most unimaginable ways. Throughout the 95% of your day, allow everything that happens to be alright. Remember, feeling good must be of overriding importance to you. So before you engage in any outer action, or go into any interaction with another person or thing, ask yourself how it would make you feel. Ask yourself how your inner state will change as a result of the interaction. Does it make you feel better or worse? If it makes you feel worse, then don't do it. Don't do it just to prove that you are right, or to prove your point. Don't do something you'll regret later on that you eventually come to feel sorry or guilty about. Don't. Just stay away from all that. Take the high road, even if it means letting the other person be right or letting the other party have their way. Nothing is more important than that you feel good, and it is all that matters. If you want to be an effective manifester, you have to go to great lengths to maintain your inner composure and state. You must allow yourself to be imperturbable, despite of outer circumstances and situations. When you get to that state of imperturbability and stay there. When you make feeling good 95% of the time your one and only priority in your life. Everything happens and flows. Things you have asked for in the past and long forgotten, things you have barely asked for and things you have not even asked for. Because when you truly live the 95-5 code, the only thing you have to do is to take things one step at a time, and the rest will be done unto you. As is so eloquently stated in the Tao teaching by Lao Tzu, the great master that is the Tao is nothing, yet he leaves nothing undone. And it is so. 